Well, life for 15-year-old Matthew Locke sucks, oh. literally. Uh, you see, Matthew isn't like most teenagers because he's an expert in vacuums. Uh -huh. The British native first set eyes on the household appliance at age three and has gathered a personal collection of around 200 vacuums, some dating back a century. Come on, not only a fan, Matthew is also a technician and has repaired and recycled over 500 machines. And while most teenagers are TikToking, Matthew is busy reviewing the beloved contraption online. Come on, let's go. Let's just get stuck into this. Matthew Locke <laughs> joins us live. Welcome to the morning show. Hello. Hello, this is a, a fascinating, fascinating story. How did your love for vacuum cleaners come about in the first place? So since a really young age, I've always been interested in vacuum cleaners, how they work. Um, and my nan used to come around when my parents were at work uh, and start cleaning. I used to love getting involved with the iconic Henry vacuum cleaner with the <laughs> face on it, which really got me interested in the vacuum. Um, and then from there on, it began to snowball. I began to got, get more interested in different machines, how they worked. And then the collection started and reviews and repairs started. Matthew, that's fabulous. You know what we're going to get you to do, Dal, is walk a little bit closer to your computer because we're having trouble hearing you with the microphone with these sort of connections. So if you could just walk a little bit closer. Come in, come in, come yeah. in. <laughs> come a little bit closer. Beautiful. Um, 200 <laughs> machines. Uh, so one is over a century old. What does a 100-year-old vacuum cleaner even look like? Um, so it looks like this one down here. I'll just bring it forward. And oh, yes. It is an old machine, and it has a bag on the back that inflates when you switch it on. Uh, it makes a lot of noise, makes a lot of dust, especially when you're emptying it. Uh, very heavy, very hard to use. Uh, so yes, it's come a long way since this type of machine. Do I hate vacuuming. Do you hate people who hate vacuuming? I don't hate people who hate vacuuming, but I hate it when people get the wrong vacuum cleaner. Oh, I know. And that makes them hate vacuuming. Right, it's all about the choice that you make. Now, you've taken this love of an appliance, and even though you're just 15, you've turned it into a career. You earn extra pocket money. What, what do you do? So I repair vacuum cleaners for friends, family, or anyone who needs them repairing. But I also review vacuums, test and try them out on the back mat, which is my social media channels, to make sure that you're getting the best vacuum cleaner for your money because there's so many machines out there, as you can see, there's loads of them. Um, it's so important nowadays that they're expensive machines that you choose the correct one. Do you have a favourite one that's like just, it's in your bedroom on the cupboard and you just look at it every night and go, that is the best vacuum cleaner ever in the history of vacuum cleaners? Um, I have a few favourite ones, um, all good for different reasons. And um, we have the Dyson V11, which is just over there in gold. That is an amazing vacuum cleaner. You have the outsized version of that in the studio, which is only available in Australia, but is a really good machine. Um, the Sebo, which is just here, is another excellent one. It goes flat to the floor. It's really good at carpet cleaning, and it automatically adjusts with its exceptional um, S-class filtration. So you can clean everywhere and make sure the dust is staying inside of it when you've finished. And another different one is the pack vac, which is just over there. And that vacuum actually sits on your back. Um, and it's yes. a really interesting machine, um, really interesting to use up high, down low, and very versatile machine. Matthew, where do you keep all these? You must drive your, your mum and dad nuts because, like, these vacuum cleaners take up a whole bunch of room. Where do you keep them all? Um, well, I've got a little shed at the bottom of the garden where I keep most of them. And then the best ones stay in the house. And they're getting constant use to make sure, even though they are the best, every vacuum needs some improvements. So I'll be feeding back to the manufacturers about what, what needs improving with even the best machines. Wow. Um, you mentioned the, Di the oversized Dyson uh, that I have here. Is it only available yes. in Australia? Is that because we are filthier than any other <laughs> country in the world? Why would, why would uh, Mr Dyson make us uh, a, a big vacuum cleaner? Because we're dirty? 
I don't know about that, but uh, they're definitely an amazing machine. So if you, if you have got filthy carpets, it's one that will clean them properly. Okay. You know what, Matthew, what I figure is the best vacuum cleaner is one that you actually use. You can buy a big fang dangled one, but it just stays in the cupboard because it's too hard to get out. That's not a good vacuum cleaner. So would, would that be your top pick for picking a best machine? Yeah, make sure the machine works for you. Test them all out yourself in the shops. Try them out. Um, but ultimately, as you say, it's using the machine that really counts. All right. Well, uh, fascinating to talk to you this morning. It's made me want to go home and vacuum. Kinda. <laughs> Good to chat. Great to speak to you. Thank That's you so fascinating. much. Yeah, just a little little kid, 15-year-old kid in England, just, just his passion. So we thought it was really interesting to I'm going to go home and put a vacuum cleaner on the kitchen bench like he has and see what Sylvie says <laughs> about that. <laughs> anyway, he's uh, what a top kid. Yeah, good stuff. We're back.